Today we're testing out these two generators to finally figure out which one really is more fuel efficient. We'll test out both generators, which both of these are brand new with less than an hour on it. The Honda does have a bigger engine at 121 cc's and does idle lower. So we'll see if that's actually more fuel efficient than the smaller 80 cc, which is Yamaha's MZ80 motor, which this is super popular, but will the smaller 40 cc's actually make a big difference over the Honda? Now the Yamaha does idle higher, so we will see how much of a factor that actually plays while we do our tests. But one thing with these two generators is the gas tanks are a little bit different sizes, so I'm actually not going to use those. I'm going to have to make some kind of an external fuel tank so I can monitor the fuel levels. So we'll come over here and see what we have. Now I do need some fuel lines, so I can use this tubing right here. That'll work. And now I need some to hold the fuel, which I can use this little kind of a septo syringe. That thing will actually work just fine. We'll take off this little cap, and then we'll take off the little squishy bulb up on top. And now I can hook the fuel line up, and this will work as our external tank. Now all I have to do is hook this up to the carburetor, and the fuel line is right behind it on the Yamaha, so it's really easy to get to. But on the Honda, it's a little bit different because there is a fuel pump right there, and then the line goes behind the airbox. So I'm going to actually take that off, that way I can get directly to the carb. So we'll just go ahead and remove the airbox cover, take our pre-filter and our air filter off, and now we can just go ahead and remove the rest of the airbox. And that'll let me get access to the fuel line behind the carburetor. So we'll just take this, move it off to the side. We'll disconnect the original fuel line. And now we'll make sure that there's no fuel in it. We'll shake it out on a rag. And then we can go ahead and continue hooking up. But I'm going to block off this fuel pump real quick. That way it's not trying to pump fuel. Now we'll hook up the new external fuel line and make sure we have a little clamp on there so it stays put. And then we can go ahead and just kind of put this off to the side. And I've already flushed this. That way there's no debris in it. Now we'll go ahead and just put the air box back on, reassemble this, and go outside and test it. I'm going to add a little extension that way I have some working room. We'll go ahead and put this external tank at the top of this stool. That way it holds it in place. And we'll mount our fuel line underneath, then get rid of the little squishy bolt. And then we'll get some tape to kind of hold this down. That way it doesn't vibrate all over the place and possibly make a mess. And this should kind of complete our external tank. We'll just get a little bit of fuel now, top it off, and we'll do a test run on the generator. So I've got the external line already hooked up and I tried to squeeze all the air out of the line so it should be nice and primed and ready to go. I'm gonna turn this into the on position but fuel off. We'll turn the eco switch off and then I'm also gonna turn the vent off on the gas tank and then we'll just fire up the choke and then away it goes. All right, so we got it up and running. I'm gonna do a quick visual inspection to make sure I don't have any fuel leaks going on inside there because I do have a fuel line that's just kind of hanging freely but make sure there's no leaks and we can go ahead and start the test. So, so far everything looks good. You can see the fuel level right here is actually going down. So now we'll go ahead and get ready to start our test. So I've already primed the line, it's already running, and I'm gonna start it with the load already going. So I'm gonna put 400 watts, that's gonna be our first test. And we're gonna do three tests, 400 watts, 1,000 watts, and then 1,800 watts for both of these generators. We'll write down how long they last, and also the RPM, because I do have a little RPM gauge over there on the side, so we'll take a look. Okay, so I have 400 watts already hooked up and going on the generator. The gas tank is almost full. So now as we take a look, we're at about 407 watts. With a few things going, we'll make sure we'll monitor everything and all the air is primed out of the line. We'll take a look over here at the RPM real quick. If you take a look, we're at about, oh, 2800, just a little over 2800 RPM. So I'm gonna fill up the reservoir and then I'll start the timer and then we'll let it go and see how long it lasts. So we'll top this off. And as soon as I get to the top of the ring right there, we'll go and start it. And away we go. So both generators will be in eco mode for all the tests, just so you guys know. That way they're at their lowest RPMs at all times. And now you can see the generator is running and the fuel is draining out of the little reservoir. It's holding a good 400 watts steady. And also the RPM will go over here and take a quick peek. So, so far the generator is doing great. Take a look at the RPM. And we're still at just over 2800 at 2820, 2030. So we'll mark that down. Doing just over five minutes. So, so far the testing is going great. And so now I'm going to start speeding up the video. That way we don't have to be here forever. But you can see the fuel is now starting to go down into the tube. And we're still holding a good 400 watts. So we'll see how long this test lasts. Now we're just coming up to 14 minutes. The generator's starting to die. So if the power goes out or engine shuts off, I'll stop the timer. And there goes the power, so we'll shut off the timer. And even though the generator is now starting to run for a few more seconds here, we'll kind of see when it dies and the power is back on. But once the initial power shuts off, if the other generator does the same, I'll shut it off. But 
and the Honda's still running here a few more seconds. We'll maybe add a few seconds to the test, but I think I'll just leave it at that first power shutoff. But if the generators are really close, we'll kind of have to use that as like a handicap or something. But and now you can see there goes the generator completely dead. We'll get on to the next test. Okay, so test two, this will be our thousand watt test. So we'll start the timer. Then we'll go down here and we'll look at the watt meter. Now you can see I'm almost at a thousand watts. So we'll make this kind of a 990 watt test. I'll make sure I use the same functions or at least the same items being used to provide the load as we take a look at our RPM now. And we'll compare this with the Yamaha next. We're at about 3,150. So we'll write that down. All right, so you can see now the test is almost over. The second one for the Honda coming up close to eight minutes. So we'll go over here and see how long we got. And almost done. And there we go, almost nine minutes and 23 seconds. Last test, and we'll start the timer. And as we take a look, we're right at 1800 watts basically. So we'll go over here and take a look at the generator and see how many RPMs were at about 3,820, 3,830 roughly. And if you take a look at the side panel here, it actually says the rated revolution is 4,000 RPM. That's kind of when it kicks up into that higher gear, but it also sounds a lot like an outboard motor. Are you guys with me? So fuel is just about gone. So this test is just about over. We'll see what it looks like on the timer. And as it shuts off, there we go, five minutes, 46 seconds. We'll go ahead and get the Yamaha hooked up and start the test on that. Okay, so Yamaha is now up and going. I have all the fuel basically primed in the line. We have 400 watts at the heater going. Now we'll go ahead and start this test. We'll fill this up. We'll go ahead and hit the timer. And away we go. So now as we compare the Yamaha and the RPM as to oppose the Honda. So we're at 3,500 RPM here. And if you take a look at what we had on the Honda 2800, that's quite a bit different, like almost 700 RPM. So it'll be interesting to see the time difference between the two because we were at about just over 14 minutes. So we'll see if the higher RPM really does affect this a lot. Okay, so the times are actually getting pretty close right now at least because with the higher RPM, I thought it would have been going a lot longer, but we still have a lot of fuel in the fuel line. So we'll see how much longer it lasts, but the time's so far pretty close. All right, now as we take a look, we actually did break the time of the Honda, and there it went at 15 minutes and, well, almost 31 seconds. So we'll go ahead and start test two. This is gonna be the 1,000 watt test. So now you can see we're at 3,900 RPM, and as opposed to the Honda, as we take a look, because this is turning quite a bit more, so the Honda had 3,150, and we're at 39, so that's over 700 this time as opposed to last test. And this also doesn't put up quite the amount of wattage, even though we're using the same setup, the test last time also showed the Yamaha had a little bit less watts coming out. As we take a look at the fuel coming down quickly, and the test is actually pretty close on this one as well, and there's just a little bit of fuel left, so now as we take a look at our time, and as the generator starts to die, the test between the Honda on the mid-range, these two are actually pretty close, even though the Yamaha still came out ahead just a little bit. It's actually pretty close as you look at the time here, 10 minutes and eight seconds. Okay, so last test, this is gonna be our 1800 watt test. Go ahead and start the timer. So as we take a look at the RPM, we're just a little over 4,500. And if you take a look at the rated that's actually on the Yamaha, it's actually rated for 4,500 and 4,900, which is when you use that boost mode. And as we take a look at our watt meter here, it is kind of flashing because sometimes when I've done this test with the Yamaha, it'll start to flash at about 1775. I'm not sure if it's kind of putting out a warning or something, or if it is actually the watt meter because it is only rated at 1800 watts. So, and I have burned a couple of these when I've been playing around testing. And now the fuel is just about gone. So we'll see how this compares to the Honda on a full load test. As it starts to die and we take a look at the timer, let's go ahead and compare. So as we take a look, the Yamaha definitely performed a lot better at the 400 watt test. And if the fuel tank was larger, the gap would be even wider. So it definitely is more fuel efficient in the low range. Even a 990 watt test, it still had a decent margin above the Honda. But at that 1800 watt, you could almost pretty much call that one a tie. So now you have to decide which one is for you, the more powerful Honda or the more fuel efficient Yamaha because over the long run, it's gonna save you a lot of money. So I hope you liked the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And until then, I hope to see you guys next time.